Hello, welcome to another video on my channel. I'm so excited to meet each of you. Are you keeping fine? So today I've got a book review and remember that all the book suggestions and reviews I do on my channel is from my experience. I'm not promoting any book, but I'm just promoting the experience that I have. So before I begin today's video, if you're visiting the channel for the first time, my name is Rini Rose Matthew. I'm a language trainer. I'm an author. If you want to get details of the books that I've written, of the articles that I have published, all you have to do is just go to my channel, visit all the videos. And this is a tip from my personal side. You need to visit at least a few YouTube channels and select the ones that work for you. And remember to watch 80% of the videos on the channel because that is how you get the idea. You get details and um, elaborate uh, vision. You get a proper vision on what the channel and how the creator creates each video with passion. Okay, so coming to today's video, are you excited? Now, this is the book that I have chosen for today. The title is When Things Fall Apart by Pema Chodron. It is a very famous book. I found it on Amazon. And also, I have seen a lot of people talking about this book, When Things Fall Apart. Very important title. Okay. So, I just wanted to go through it and find out. So, I have underlined a few uh, pages and also I've taken down my own notes. I always do that. So I will give you the highlights of this book. Please listen to the complete content before you comment and before you make a note of whatever I'm trying to convey through this video because if you comment with a lot of questions, what could happen is there will be people visiting the channel for the first time. They will not have an idea of what I'm trying to convey. So to get fluency in the English language, you have to do a lot of things. And the answers to all these questions are repeated through all of my videos. So if you like my channel, please watch all the videos on the channel. Please do that. Now coming to today's book, When Things Fall Apart. I have a few points. Now, when you select a book, this is from my personal experience, make sure that you read uh, the review on the book. You try to understand the purpose of reading a book. Because I have made this mistake. I chose a few few books two months back. And actually, those were famous books, but it did not help me much. And I felt that um, it was uh, the content was not uh, very satisfying, especially uh, for I did not find what I was looking for. So you need to choose a book based on how it is going to help you. And you need to know why you're reading the book. And if you don't like the book, you can close it. Um, it's not a big deal. You can just close it after reading the two pages if it's not interesting. And if you try to go back to the book after one month and if you still feel it's not interesting, it's okay, don't read it. Nobody's forcing you. Now, this particular book, I found it interesting because there were a few points. And I will also talk about something that I didn't like about the book because this is my personal experience and these are my suggestions, my opinions. You don't have to agree to it. So I'm just sharing whatever I have learned. Now, talking about the learnings, when we take a moment, when we take every experience in our life, the author is asking you to acknowledge whatever happens in your life. Like sometimes when you face a breakup in a relationship or if there is a death or if something happens to you all of a sudden, unexpectedly, uh, it just happens. It comes out of the... Uh, it comes out of nowhere and you don't expect it. Then the author is asking you to first acknowledge it. Yes, this has happened to me or this is happening in this world. And try to just take a deep breath. The author goes on to talk about meditation and the purpose of meditation. Now, that was a learning for me. What I thought is meditation is like sitting in one place and trying to focus and concentrate and you don't get distracted. No, that is not the purpose of meditation at all. And this point highlighted by the author in this book 
it gave me a different perspective about meditation and that is how it helps you don't have to necessarily go for a meditation class or you don't have to take the training of a person if you understand completely what the author is trying to tell you so do not squelch the thoughts do not be uneasy with whatever is happening in your life especially when things fall apart or when you feel that things are falling apart and it's not meeting my expectation do not try to escape from that do not try to squeeze the thoughts because some people uh, even when you speak to a person if you tell about a problem if you say that this is something that i face i want you to solve it or this is something that i face with you i'm not comfortable with this some people escape so even if you don't accept acknowledge that this is happening if it's a terrible thing because the title is things fall apart if it's a terrible thing you need to just acknowledge it do not try to squelch it squeeze it and try to make something else out of it it is happening don't have any opinion don't have any feedback don't think it happened for example if something is falling apart literally if a glass falls down and it breaks the glass has fallen down it broke into pieces acknowledge it okay that's the first point the second point is in a lifetime's journey we should relate to the immediacy of our experience that is everything happens all of a sudden some things take time some things happen uh without notice and some things just happen and it uh continues and life just goes on only some people take note of it so we should accept the fact that life is like this immediacy of our experience now this particular point is repeated throughout the book and i felt that it is very jarring because this line itself is repeated we should understand the immediacy of our experience now when there is repetition it is good because it helps you to understand the stress that the author gives to that point but still in this book i personally felt that uh this uh, author was repeating it again and again okay it's my personal opinion and sometimes we are so ingrained we are completely into the human pattern of a uh, feeling that success is like you know i should always get a good job i should get a good life i should have all the comforts of life and sometimes when you look at other people your cousins or your um siblings or your family members you may feel oh the person is better than me you don't know what is happening in the in the life of that person this happens on social media also but everything seems to be happy and everything seems to be better than you and you just have one perspective so there is something known as camera angle and there is something known as one perspective another perspective so everything looks colorful and fruitful and you may feel that oh that is not my pattern and i'm not falling into this pattern the pattern is made up by the society the pattern is made by human beings it's okay to fall apart because uh if you don't get stirred suppose you want a very good cup of steaming cappuccino you need to stir the ingredients you can have the sugar you can have the uh, milk powder the coffee powder whatever you want to put in separately right and will you allow it to churn in your stomach no you need to stir it so some stirrings are good okay so like that the author is telling sometimes we are so happy and complacent with the human pattern of being so happy and comfortable in our life and maybe only uh, unprecedented things and unexpected things happen in our life and we start complaining now not complaining is not easy i can un- completely relate with that but still these are some of the things that you need to understand what is fear i've talked about this in one of my videos please listen to that yes this particular video now um uh, there is an interesting way how the author has uh, given a dialogue this is how fear speaks to you okay listen to this very carefully my weapons are that i talk fast and i talk very close to your face if you don't do what i say i have no power fear is telling you i talk very fast and if you don't do what i say i have no power so whenever you're faced with an unexpected situation you have got that fear it's human it's human you get perplexed you get tensed 
and you it's not taking decisions quickly don't confuse that with fear you have this fear piling up in your mind and it talks very fast to you and if you don't acknowledge fear fear will not have any control over it so some people what they do is they try to escape they try to divert their mind that is not going to help you because later all that you faced will be suppressed you will face repression regression and all these things these are all different terms used in counseling and psychiatry i've written an article on this but still i'm not going to go into all that so fear this is how fear talks to you if you acknowledge me i have power i talk very fast so we should be able to communicate with ourselves it's not that we should blabber our speech should be tamed in such way such a way that you communicate yourself and tell that i've got fear i acknowledge that i'm scared just breathe in i'm scared accept it don't say no 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 i'm not scared i'm very bold yes when you're scared you need to say i am scared i don't know what is going to happen um i'm not sure of what is happening it's okay you don't have to put on the face at least to yourself and say i'm not scared i'm okay with everything that is happening if you're really okay it's fine but you feel okay only when you accept all these things when you acknowledge what is happening so these are the tips the next point is life is ambiguous it is uncertain you have to accept that at least acknowledge it so sometimes you will have downs and for some people it's for a long period of time for some people it is a short period of time some people get over it very quickly some people keep it to themselves some people try to open up about it so it varies from person to person so uh, this particular author talks about non theism non theism is relaxing with ambiguity you just relax ambiguity and uncertainty it's like you have two friends ambiguity uncertainty shake hands with both of them relax with them so when you relax with them it is like you can face things in a better way that's the next point i'm just giving you the main highlights okay then there is this beautiful concept of sand ca- castle sand castle when you build a sand castle you know that it is temporary in the you know when when you go to the beach when you try working on the sand castle it's not very easy to build a sand castle adults do it children enjoy doing it you know that the waves will come and wash it off it will be swept off in a moment the life is not permanent of a sand castle then why do you make it if it's not permanent why do you make it one day it will be swept off one day you're going to lose one day you're going to lose what you created so nothing is you know in our possession it is there but when you're making the sand castle enjoy it completely do not be attached to it right so what is the trick the trick is to enjoy it fully without clinging to it without getting attached to it and you should understand that one day it will get dissolved in the sea and again someone else will come and make another sand castle enjoy it and the same thing repeats so life is like that a beautiful picture is there in this book it is described now um it is not very easy for you to not get attached like your children your belongings what you like it's not easy to not get attached but you shouldn't be also indifferent because people get mixed up when i when i talk to my learners when i take counseling sessions people say i love that person you're asking me not to get attached to the person you can do all the good things you can be kind at the same time don't get attached don't cling to the person like a leech don't do that so it's like you know that you should you should acknowledge that everything is uncertain anything can happen all right that is the idea behind this book it is painful to go from being completely stuck to becoming unstuck yes so when you are transforming yourself from that clinging pattern to not being attached okay where you free yourself from that 
uh, intense bond. I'm not speaking about the good bonding that you have, but the intense clinging pattern, it's very painful. But you're undoing a pattern there. You're acknowledging something. And this particular pattern will keep you dissatisfied. You may get frustrated and it may cause a lot of suffering. So everything that you have in this materialistic world, on this beautiful planet, is transitory. You need to understand that. And acknowledging, acknowledging this fact itself will cause you suffering. That is what the author is trying to say. But once you start practicing on it, it is not painful. So initially it's going to be difficult, but later it's going to be easy. Then um, as human beings, we always want solution. Okay, and whenever you face a problem, you feel I deserve a solution. Come on, I need to do something about it. And when you feel that there is no solution, you suffer. It's like you have a problem and you feel I should find the solution. I need a solution for this. I deserve a solution. And why nobody is giving me the solution? That itself is causing suffering. So what the author is trying to tell you is when there is no solution, acknowledge it. Just breathe in. Don't think about it as not having solution or having solution. Being in that moment, that is what the author is trying to say. Okay. So um, six ways of uh, sufferings that you could have is loneliness, less desire, unnecessary activity, discipline is not there, wandering thoughts, insecure feeling, lack of security, okay, rampant thoughts, all these things are various types of suffering. And as you know, it's not very easy to run away from your own self, from your own mind, because your mind is like that. It's so tricky and it's so beautiful at the same time. So then the author speaks about thinking. What is thinking? That is, when you think, do not have opinions, do not analyze so much, do not try to be judgmental, all those things. Just, just have a pattern, just have those thoughts and do not solidify it. It is like you have the thought, the thought comes, goes. It is not very easy to do all these things because sometimes when you analyze situations, when you analyze people, you know that something is wrong. You know that a particular situation is wrong. You know that a particular person is not doing the right thing to you. You cannot say, oh, the thought came to me, I just left it because the author has asked you to do it. No, it's not like that. Don't solidify it. You know why? Because you're going to live with that negative thought. You have acknowledged the fact that the person has done something wrong to you. Forgive the person, but do not forget the lesson. And acknowledge that particular moment or act or situation. It has happened. It is not for my good. Leave it. Don't solidify, don't polarize and say it is bad, good, all those things. So I, I learned my lesson, I forgive the person. Very easy, you're at peace with yourself. Okay? And um, don't get rooted to your pain because that will make you suffer ultimately, not the other person. Alright? So pain is not punishment and pleasure is not a reward. Pain is not punishment. Pleasure is not a reward. So when you have too much of happiness, when you are happy, do not uh, be so happy and so complacent with it. You just enjoy it, just like the sand castle. You enjoy the happiness, you share it with others, that's it. Don't be on cloud nine and then do that, all the extreme things, you know, give a party to your friends, it's okay. Just like that, when you have a bad day, when you have sorrows, it should be the same thing. Okay, I share it with someone, I keep it to myself, I had a bad day. And maybe a person cheated me. That's it. Just like how you have happiness. Have the balance. Don't get carried away by the happiness. Don't get carried away by the sadness, the sorrows and all that. And then one more point is, in this world, you've got these opposites. Opposites are complementary. You've got good, you'll have evil. You have got wisdom, you will have ignorance. Okay? You cannot separate it. You have the beautiful, you have the ugly also. Without the ugly, you will not understand the concept of beauty. Yes? So like that, all the opposites are complementary. Now, people say, I want to be fully alive. I want to be fully human. I want to be completely awake. I want to do that. I want to do this. 
So when you want to be completely human, do not expect life to be a bed of roses. How do you become fully active? How do you tap your potentials if you are not thrown off your nest? If you are not thrown off your comfort zone, how will your potentials develop? Now this varies from person to person. People keep on thinking about the problems that they have. It's okay, you just have thought, acknowledge it. But they don't move forward. This happened to me, this happened to me, this happened to me. So when you're shaken off your nest, deflect it. Use it as a positive part. Try to do something with that negativity. That is how life becomes happier. It becomes purposeful also for you. Okay, that is what the author is trying to tell you. And he goes on to describe about Bodhi Dharma, which the, uh, this particular concept brought Zen Buddhism from India to China. If you're interested, you can read about it in the book. I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, so that is one another point. One more point is the Tonglin. I'm hearing it for the first time, Tonglin. It is like you ventilate an atmosphere. Suppose you have got a very bad experience. You undergo a very bad experience. It is the, you know, the most disastrous, atrocious thing that can happen to you in your life. It has happened to you. Okay. And um, what this per person is telling is this concept of Tonglin allows you to breathe freely. That is, you acknowledge what has happened to you and you breathe for everyone facing the same problem. Suppose you're falling sick. You breathe in not only for yourself, but for everyone suffering with that problem. So this is what meditation does. It's not sitting in one place wearing nice white uh, pajamas or kurtas, whatever it is, light colored dresses, sitting there in one place and enjoying the fresh air. No, it's more of inhaling the freshness, exhaling the toxic components. Okay, so inhale the freshness and when you exhale, you need to exhale all the things, flush out everything, all the bad thoughts, all the negativity. Inhale not just for yourself, but for everyone facing the same problem. So it's like breathing. Wish that everyone gets this free space. Exhale whatever you don't want. Flush it out. Flush out all the negative relationships, negativity, negative bonds. A person has scolded you for the wrong reasons. So all that thing. But inhale, a person gifted you a flower, a person smiled at you, a person brought a piece of cake for you, all that you inhale. Exhale all the other things. That is what the person is trying to tell you, this particular order. So when you do that, you're connecting yourself with the uh, wisdom and the richness, the primitive, the pristine wisdom and richness uh, that you had when you were born on this planet. We all, each, each adult has got a child in himself or herself. So you get connected with that child. You get connected with the uh, innocence. You get connected with the phenomenal world. You get connected with things as they are instead of forming opinions or being judgmental. Now get me right. I'm not asking you to not analyze situations. I'm not asking you to not stay away from negative people and negative situations and something that harms you. So something has harmed you and you uh, inhale and again you fall into the same trap. It's not like that. It's not like that. So something happens to you unexpectedly that is out of control. You cannot control it. You could not control it. It happened. Now what can be done? So when things fall apart, these are some of the ways in which you find meaning, purpose and you move on in a healthy way. So escaping, because people say you need to divert your attention because that will not work every time. When you divert your attention, what happens is thoughts, feelings, whatever you have got in your mind, it is getting suppressed, it is getting repressed also, it gets repressed, regression will take place and later it develops into diseases and problems, Psycho uh, you know, psychological problems. Later. And one more point the author highlights, that's very important, we are not talking about ignoring or keeping quiet, don't do that. Because you're harming yourself again. When you harm yourself, you're har harming others in the house. You're harming people in the society. You shouldn't ignore. You shouldn't keep quiet. Because some people, when, when I ask them or when counselors ask them, when tutors ask them to inhale and just accept 
the positive part of everything they keep quiet they ignore and they say i have accepted only the positive part but it's still hurting okay so don't ignore don't keep quiet that is not a solution for anything when we don't buy into our opinions don't buy into your opinions and solidify the sense of enemy that is when you can move on in a healthy way that is when you find purpose so just hang out in that open space so suppose you're facing a very big problem you're in a crucial part of your life you're facing a crisis it's like you don't know you don't know with whom you can share this problem you don't know where to go you don't have a place to go some problems are like that and you don't feel like sharing it you're just stuck the author is asking you to just hang out in that open space and use this tonglin concept breathe in for everyone facing the same problem instead of forming opinions and immediately analyzing it that should not stop you from getting the solution for it but do not get worked up just hang in that open space do not find a ground do not find anything solid so that you can replace that problem what happens is when a person when people face problems they try to divert they try to find some other way of running away from the problem or they find things to cling on a person to cling on but that is also temporary no one can help you until and unless you help yourself so how do you help yourself you hang in that open space for some time just acknowledge it it's not that you have to accept it that is up to you but hang out in the open space and the tender energy you should understand that you are vulnerable you are tender you are fragile you don't know what to do so not knowing anything just feel that moment i don't know anything i am in this particular problem just in just not even enjoy just be in that open space just be okay so it's like you're caught between a rock and a hard place you're caught between upliftedness of ideas and rawness of what's happening you don't know what's happening you don't have the power to think you don't have the power to analyze you don't know what is happening you don't know what is going to happen after this particular uh, moment of hanging in the space it's okay just hang in the space that is what the author is trying to tell you so uh, one more point is when you hear a sound it is like some sounds punctuate it startle us yes the author is telling you just acknowledge the sound analyze it after some time after acknowledging it for some time then you start analyzing it whether you should take action or whether it is just a sound a sound is always a sound it becomes it starts affecting you it has an impact on you only when you are startled only when you start punctuating it that's another point with another example so another important point the conclusion it's like finding that the sky and the sun are always there and it's the storms and clouds that come and go the sun and the sky is always there the sun will not say you have a problem today so i'll not shine today i'll come next week after your problems are gone the sun and the sky is it's always there it's only the clouds and storms that come and go so when things fall apart they are just clouds and storms and the transitory phase every difficult phase is like a passing cloud the sun is there the sun will shine the sky is also there all right accept that and enter into a relationship with this phenomenal world that is how you enter into this uh, relationship with the world otherwise you will not be able to feel the air you will not be able to enjoy the moment you will not be able to enjoy everything that is happening if you are going to get stuck with just your work if you're going to get stuck with only your family members if you're going to get stuck with only your hobby you will miss out on so many things like suppose i have a problem today i can see a child smiling at me if i don't enjoy that moment it's gone i will not get that moment tomorrow i have a problem behind it's it's running at the back of my head but at the same time if i just smile at the child if i observe the child the way the child looks at me the eyes nose the innocence and all that just hang out in that space the problem is still there 
but it's okay you get the energy so that is how you get the energy that is how energy transfers from one place to another one person to another also okay i hope you get the gist of this book it is a very simple book now talking about the language it is really simple the language is very simple but i personally feel that so many points are repeated that is why i thought of just writing down a few points and talking about the vocabulary it is fine okay and the author has included a lot of quotes and very interesting titles chapter titles all that is there but if you feel that it is repetitive then you just have to skip a few lines and go to the next part of the book it is a very small book and you can finish it within 2 days that's what i did and i thought of um sharing it with you when things are shaky we are on the verge of something so remember that when something is shaky you are getting a better version of yourself and something is coming soon it's not just the problem it's not just that something is happening but beyond that you are transforming you are evolving allow for that evolution to take place allow for that transformation to take place so always stay happy i hope you liked this particular video and do comment after watching the complete video stay happy stay positive this is vini rose matthew bye bye